I knew better than to wear my gloves when I was operating a lathe. I knew better than to calibrate while the lathe was running. It was a stupid mistake, and it's one I'll be paying for for the rest of my life. I wouldn't have lost my temper. I wouldn't have lost these. Safety is a, a cornerstone of our apprenticeship program and the NIM skill credentialing. My colleagues have worked more than 21 years without a single hour of lost time due to a work-related incident. We're here at EJ Ajax and Sons located in Fridley, Minnesota to observe their safety culture. EJ Ajax and Sons is a metal stamping, metal fabrication company. They're known for their strict policy on safety for all their employees and visitors. They've worked over 21 years without a single hour lost to a work-related accident. Before we go in, let's cover a few things about what you should wear and what you should not wear when going in to do an appraisal inspection. As you'll notice here, I am wearing my steel-toed safety shoes, leather uppers, many plants now, request that you wear steel-toed shoes. Many plants also have policies against canvas, shoes, sneakers, and sandals. Always wear steel-toed safety shoes with leather uppers. I've also brought along with me my hard hat. I've got my hearing protection. And I've got my safety glasses with side shields. For those of you that wear glasses, if you'll notice I have these rubber side shields that slip on over your regular glasses. They work great. You don't have to strain to see through a patch of uh, scratched up safety glasses that you mooched off the people when you came in. Um, one thing, you guys always bring your own gear when you come. Uh, you look more like a professional rather than having to mooch a hard hat or safety glasses. Uh, normally hearing protection if it's required is provided by the plant and they're disposable. You'll also notice I have a cell phone. I'm bringing it in with me. It's kind of interesting. I was in a plant a couple weeks ago where they have a very strict zero tolerance policy regarding cell phone use on the shop floor. Um, I'm bringing it in with me. I'm not going to use it and if you need to make a phone call rather than do it on the production floor go outside uh, so you're paying attention and you aren't going to get hit by a forklift or have something drop from a crane onto you. The highest ethical and moral responsibility as the owners of our metal forming company. It's literally part of our, our DNA that we believe and breathe every day. I can say every meeting starts with safety, whether it's meeting with our customers, our suppliers, uh, our weekly meetings with our employees. We discuss safety all the time. We also make safety very personal. And professional metal formers simply don't get hurt on the job. Professionals do not get hurt on the job. Bottom line is our, our policy here. And you don't like to refer to them as accidents, you refer to them as incidents, correct? Incidents. It, we, 
the word accident does not exist anywhere in our facility. We call it an incident or an injury. In fact, we just renewed our, our vows here. We call it IF, incident and injury free. And we'll show you what that looks like. Eric, talking about OSHA, as I mentioned, a lot of these places I visit, uh, the owner will kind of regard OSHA as a specter, a, a bad guy the enemy, uh, kind of an adversarial relationship, you look at OSHA as, as more or less a partner, isn't that correct? OSHA is truly our, our partner. We've collaborated with Men OSHA for almost three decades now. Uh, they're voluntary compliance. They come in with great recommendations and suggestions on things that we can do to make our, our facility safer. Uh, it's not an adversarial relationship. It's truly a collaborative partnership. Men OSHA uh, has provided us with tens of thousands of dollars worth of, of safety grants over the last uh, three decades and we're exempt from any routine ins OSHA inspection here at EJHX. So it really is a, a partnership. In conclusion? In conclusion, Jack, we really uh, look at, at four or five things that, that keep our safety culture and esprit de corps in place here at EJHX. We uh, work very hard to eliminate at-risk behavior. We inspire people to want to work safely for the right reasons as opposed to having to work safe just because I'm the boss. Uh, in that situation, it's a catch me if you can. Uh, we make safety very personal uh, on, a, on a daily basis with everyone. We have random drug and alcohol testing. And the interesting thing is that safety and lean have had just a huge return on investment for us in the fact that they're joined at the hip with productivity and profitability. We're with Robert Duvall here at EJA Jackson Sons. Rob's going to give me the plant tour. Uh, we go into a lot of dangerous places with moving equipment, machinery that's in operation, and one of the first things that's important for us to be aware of is fork trucks. Ron, what can you tell me about fork trucks, Rob? The first thing I want you to do is be comfortable with your surroundings. And please remember, these guys are focused. They do have a job to do. They're not always looking behind them. They are, of course, using their horns, their warning systems. They're here to do a job. So if you please, uh, make sure that you're not in their lanes and you stay out of their way. The things I think that should be a first uh, instinct is checking the scene, finding out what the terrain is. Be comfortable with what's on the floor, what's overhead, what's around you. So what you're saying as visitors, be aware of your surroundings and potential hazards at all times. At all times. Okay, be aware of things like exposed flywheels. Don't get near it. Don't put your finger anywhere near there. This one's high up in the air, but watch out moving parts like exposed flywheel. Be careful when approaching a machine when it's in operation. Don't disturb the operator. Don't startle the operator. Ask before you walk up and do anything. One of the things you'll notice about this plant is it's very clean, it's neat, it's organized. There isn't shit all over the floor. This is probably cleaner than a lot of the places you're going to go into. But be aware of things on the floor, grease, uh, things to trip over. Uh, it can happen real quick. But pay attention to the floors. Watch out for grease, oil slicks. Watch out for things you can trip over. Some of the things I would like to see when I walked in a room um, would be having the rams, slides, all the mechanical parts of a prep at bottom dead center. Anything else would make me feel uncomfortable. And your comment is it makes you feel like a cat in a rocking chair if things are not bottom dead center, uh, like a potential incident waiting to happen, correct? Absolutely. One of the things to be aware of is sharp corners when you're walking around a plant. Uh, if you're not paying attention, 
This is very common sense, I understand that. But if you walk too close to something like this and brush up against it, you can cut yourself, rip your clothes, uh, be aware of sharp corners. Another common sense observation, but worth noting, pay attention underneath cranes at all times. Be aware that these cranes are designed for lifting heavy things, things that can drop on your head and cause an injury. Uh, pay attention to the ceilings and pay attention to any sort of cranes or hoists that are around you. Rob, one of the things I'm curious about, I covered it a bit earlier, uh, when we go into a plant, we're uh, inclined to go up to the machine uh, to get the model number and serial number off the data plate. And Do you have any comments about a, a safe way to do that? In other words, would you suggest that instead of just walking up to the machine when it's running, wait for the guy to stop and ask to inspect for a moment so that you don't startle the operator? Yes, I would highly recommend letting your presence be known. It's a phrase we use in a lot of our safety policies and procedures. And, you know, take a minute and say hello. Just wait for the opportunity, say hello to the operator, let your presence be known. Sure, and that's for the safety of the operator, the safety of the appraiser, and in addition, the safety of the machine itself, so that something dangerous or damaging may not happen to the machine. Absolutely. Rob, tell me about what this piece of metal, your comments on this piece of metal we're looking at right here. Uh, just one thing I'd like you to just consider is, you know, the operator can very easily wheel uh, materials in six to eight feet legs. And just remember, you know, what they're doing is more important to them than what you may want to, you know, do it. So just be cautious and realize they are very focused and they don't, if they do not know you're there, they're not aware, and you're the one at risk. And so your message there is let your presence be known. Absolutely. Uh, one of the landmines of the trade. Landmine. Is a, what we call capacitors. The electrical capacitor is designed to store electrical energy. And each one of these capacitors has the capability of knocking you on your ass or tearing you a new one. Well, what to watch out for also is the warnings are actually inside the box, not on the outside of the box. So, in this mess of wires and hoses, make sure you know where the capacitors are. So, in other words, your message here is uh, danger of potential electrical shock. Avoid any kind of these electrical boxes touching them uh, that could produce a shock. Absolutely. Incidentally, this is done without power. These capacitors have the they can store power indefinitely until discharge. Rob, incidentally, where, where did you get this piece of junk anyway? I believe we bought it from you, didn't we? Oh yeah, that's right. Okay.